Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Have you guys ever thought about making your own racket? That's correct. I'm asking you that question. Making your own racket without a factory at your house. Well, my buddy Dan did that. You're going to have to stay tuned for this one. All right, guys. So making your own racket. I could not even fathom that. I mean, I've seen it done in videos in the factory where, you know, they have this big machine. It's a press. It's extruded. You know, it's hollow in the middle the handle, you know, you know, all that stuff. It takes machinery and a lot of people. But my buddy Dan said, I made a racket. And I'm like, how the heck did you make a racket? So he's like, I will show you. I'll bring you one or two. And so he walks in here and I'm like, let me see what you got. And so he brings this in. I was like, it looks like a badminton racket. Look at how thin that is. Look how thin that is. He actually brought me two. So he likes Ferrari. He's a big Ferrari enthusiast. And he actually custom made these grips and then wrapped it. And this is part of the graphite. So it's a solid state racket. So I said, Dan, how'd you do this? Well, here we go. He had two solid blocks that were, let's say, that big. Imagine this, like this. The blocks were about that big. My man took a saw, table saw, and kind of sawed it, you know, close to a round, like that. So it was probably about that thick to start. And then he basically sanded it down to, to basically this racket drilled holes carefully through and strung it. I was like, Dan, that's a lot of work, man. He's like, yeah, man, it's toxic too, because you know, you're basically sanding off a lot of graphite on here, but this is a solid, solid state racket. There is no hollowness in here. It's solid carbon graphite. I'm like, freaking, that's amazing. How long did it take you to do that? He's like, I worked on it for probably four months. So the, the first one he worked on kind of failed because he kind of missed the hole here. That's why there's a patch to hold it together. So when he hit it, it, it snapped right there because that when he drilled that hole for uh, strings, um, it broke right there. So that's, that's what that's for, just to hold it together with a piece of graphite. Uh, but then the second attempt was more perfect. So I asked Dan, I was like, why, why does it look like a badminton racket? And he's like, I took a wooden racket and I basically made it the same size. So I have this little racket here that's going to be my wooden racket for the day. So if you look at it like this, it's kind of a, the wooden racket shape. So he's kind of making a, I want to say a 75 to 80 square inch solid state racket here. Um, and then he customized this handle. It feels great. He created the bevels. He created these bevels. And then he put a butt cap on here. That's a, that's a Wilson butt cap. So this feels you know, like a half to a five eighths, five eighths probably from where it's landing on my hand. Okay, so let's let's see what it 
it feels so headlight. Let's see where we land here. This is gonna come in at 29.5. At the scale, let's see where it balances out here. It's going to balance out in that handle for sure. 377.5. Okay, it's right in round, 313. Pretty, very headlight. It's gonna come through pretty fast, very heavy, which means most of the weight's in that handle because that's solid handle and it's a thin top. So my guess is it's gonna come through super fast and we're gonna actually try to hit with it and, and see what happens. Um, hopefully it doesn't implode on the court. All right, so I'm on the court. Got my man, Coach Chris here. Coach Goo's away with the ball and chain, playing some KPSF in a tournament that hopefully he's doing well at. But anyways, Coach Chris is the one today, and he is gonna be very, very surprised at what I'm about to show him. Coach Chris, what if I told you that a guy walked into my shop and said, I had a big block of graphite, and I literally sawed my way into a racket, sawed and sanded my way into a racket. No machinery except for a, like maybe a mechanical saw and a bunch of you know sanding tools, maybe a sander and uh, some paint. What would you say to that? It's uh, too much time on his hands. It took him about three to six months and he got some. Do you want to see the end result? Sure. What the? <laughs> So that is a racket that somebody hand made. So what do you think? We'll try hitting with this? Sure. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. racket coach Chris thoughts um, I don't think I've ever played with a homemade racket before not bad for a first attempt but I can see like after hitting with it like it vibrates so much uh, this racket is pretty thin and I can see his like you know draw to to, to trying to make it as close as to like a, a wooden racket um, but actually surprisingly if you hit it like the ball goes over the net. So at the end of the day, it does its job. It is a racket, but there's really no feel. And again, like after hitting with it a couple of times, it just wobbles a lot. It just vibrates too much. So, um, but not bad for your first attempt. Uh, definitely pretty cool to see people go out there and try to make their own rackets too, as well. So, so I, I'm sure like Chris, the first couple hits, we were like, man, we don't want to snap this racket. Yeah. So, so we were kind of just kind of easing our way into it. And then after a while, we just kind of started hauling off on it and kind of see what happens. This guy did more. Well, especially me. And uh, it didn't break. It didn't break. I did hear a big kind of a, it, you know how something bends a lot and it goes, whap back, whap back, you know, kind of, whap back, you know, like ah. you know, like that, you know, it just snapped. You know, when it bends, it snaps back. You know? So that's kind of what I felt. It was bending a lot and then snapped. So it, it, it's super, super flexible. It, it, it's like, I mean, I, I can only imagine playing with a badminton racket with a tennis ball is kind of like how this feels. The, the savior of this racket, though, is that it is solid, right? There's no hollowness to this. And the weight, I mean, we weighed it at the shop. You know this is really heavy. 
So that helped a lot with the stability of the racket. So my man Dan is the one that made this racket. So we thank Dan for uh, for doing this and, and sharing your uh, your craftsmanship here. Uh, Coach Chris, any more uh, insights? Uh, I think it might be even it's maybe make it a little thicker next time. Yeah, it'll be thicker. heavier though. But it's actually an interesting idea to like see people like hand make their rackets. Like that's kind of a niche market. Very niche. I don't know anybody else that had done this before. Yeah. In my thirty some years. That's pretty cool. So it, yeah. it'd be cool to see it maybe maybe grow into something big. Yeah, see? definitely. All right, thank you, Dan, for sh um, basically sharing this racket with us. We, we enjoyed it. We enjoyed it. Coach Chris, where can we find you? You can find me at CB Chen Tennis. All right, guys, this is my man, Dan, the Ferrari memorabilia tennis expert and the one who actually handmade his own rackets. The man, the myth, Dan, is going to take you out today. Thanks for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Oh, he can't even pick it up. <laughs>